Earlier this week, we had the opportunity and honor to sit down with Darren Bergman, DA Member of Parliament. We spoke about him choosing to build a life of service and commitment to initially his community and then his country. What it was like walking through sewerage, his rugby career as an international rugby player, and where he sees the future of South Africa and the South African dream going. We speak about the situation in the Middle East and the need for South Africa to be focusing and getting involved on the continent of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Champions, the Leadership Edition. And then if there's anything you want to edit out, you can. Never, never, never. I'm a man of... I'm a one-take man. Exactly. Correct. 100%. I'll take one. People say I embarrass myself. People say that's what Facebook is there for me to embarrass myself. Okay, no, fair enough. (laughs) A one-take man. Yeah. All right. So, uh, and let me just check input levels are good. Sweet. Okay, perfect. All right, good. We're going. So, ah, dude, thank you for uh, making the time, huh? Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Absolutely. Good. Good to have you on the board. So, there, there's a couple of things. We have the media show where we stream sports stuff. Uh, we're not going to be chatting to you about sports. I mean, have a look here. <laughs> Why <Two> not? <laughs> buff, sexy devils, huh? Yes. So, let me just get you more into camera there. Um, sorry, I must actually just point out, yes. I was actually a professional rugby player. I played for the parliamentary national, international team. The, seriously? Yes. Okay. I went to the World Cup in 2015. Right. So I am actually an international springbok. Well, okay. I'd like to call us a springbok. So you got a cap? Yes. Okay. So I had the cow. whole tour experience. Yeah? Yes. Awesome. Uh, so admittedly, I only played five minutes of rugby. Yes. Uh, I caught Why? the ball, passed the ball on. Yeah. Um, I think I was in one scrum. Um, I stuck my head in the same place as the other. I stuck his head. And, yeah. uh, and I think I was called off the field. <laughs> well, I walked off the field. I couldn't okay. breathe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then that was my experience. But I, I, I got kept. my cap. And, yeah. uh, and sure. I'll tell everyone that wants to listen about the okay. fact that I'm an international player. There we go. But you, so you actually really are an international yes. player. Yes. And I tried to sign autographs on the tube every and? single day. I think we ended up signing to... Okay. To, uh, and both of them said, check with your name. <laughs> both six-year-olds. <laughs> 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 Listen, we it'll got be it. worth a fortune one day. Yeah, 100%. Never so, Darren, thank you. Firstly, welcome. It's lucky to have you on board. Um, tell us a little bit about you, who you are, your background. We wanted to chat about how you ended up here because usually you don't look so relaxed. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Huh? So like have a cup of coffee he's like uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> four weeks in the making okay, yeah exactly well, we get it right yeah. once in a while sometimes we have to meet in Cape Town but we... yeah no it's cool but yeah listen this is good it's, it's a lack of setup eh? it is you, yeah. really, you really have got a good thing going here I awesome mean, I remember the torture chambers you had yes in, in the hood yeah the, the, the Moishi's backyard as you like to call it my poor kids having to watch me come home <laughs> not being able to get up again. Again, and not being and able to breathe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and your wife came to train with us once. We put her oh, on yes. the sled, that sled over there. And I think, uh, yeah, that was the end of uh, <laughs> that was the end of it. So, yeah. Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Darren Bergman, Minister. Uh, what is your official title? Um, now I'm the Deputy Shadow Minister of Trade and Industry. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So, Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, one child pointed out she got it on the internet. Yeah. Um, I, don't think it, I don't think it's true. Yeah. I, I, I have something called viz or biz.com. Viz.com. Yeah, yeah. Said that I've been fired and that I'm now the Deputy Shadow Trade Minister, uh, Deputy Shadow Minister of Trade and Industry. Okay. I, I was told by John that I've been uh, sideway moved. Oh, okay. Industry. industry. Um, okay. I believe John's story. Okay, uh, fair more, enough. I'm more settled by John's story. Yeah. And, uh, I'm having fun there, I must admit. Um, okay. I'm having just as much of a, you know, I'm getting just as much out of it. So yeah. I'm learning a lot more. And, uh, okay, that's so the I thing. It's, it's 
change is as good as a holiday. Yeah. So how did it start? What got you into the politics thing and not professional rugby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, basically, to be honest, mm. Um, no, no, you're a politician. It's not yes, necessary. No, that's why I have to point that out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in, yeah. in grade, what do we call it these days? Grade 11. No, no, we're old. Standard 9. Yeah, Fine. so standard yeah. 9, yeah. form 4. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to do my English oral, and I was going to do it on aeroplanes, which was actually my passion, and I actually okay. wanted to be a pilot, and I think I still do want to be a pilot. And I was going to take my aeroplanes and I was going to, I didn't even have to prepare, I was going to do a speech on mm-hmm. aeroplanes. So I had my aeroplanes all prepared and I was a bit of a dozy ache in, in school, I suppose I still am. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I arrived there, get dropped off at the school, it's, the, the orals were done on Sundays. Okay. I get dropped off at school and lo and behold I don't have my aeroplanes with me. And the only thing I do have with me that can be a part of show and tell mm. is this far brand telephone card of Nelson Mandela. Okay. The far brand te- telecom card of Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Sure. Now, to be honest with you, I knew nothing about Nelson Mandela. I mean, I wasn't caught up in the hype of release mm-hmm. of Nelson mm-hmm. Mandela. You know, I wasn't political. I, I didn't have any. No one in the family was political. Yeah. There were, I just there was no political motivation around me or anything of the sort. But I managed to speak for five minutes around Nelson Mandela, um, having okay. not known the person, having yes. known nothing about the person. <laughs> I did manage to talk about the person for five minutes, and okay. obviously convincingly, because my English teacher at the time then uh, told me about another book, Tomorrow is Another Country, Yes. and she made me read that book. Okay. And uh, I read it, yeah. and it's about how uh, Sora Maposa and Rolf Mayer basically negotiated the... Yeah the peace deal of this country. At the casino in Kenton Park. You were in <laughs> well, no, that was before Kenton. Yeah, yeah, I, was say, was I, I must tell you, I mean, subsequently I've heard so much more since then. Uh, yeah. That book for me though was the, the catalyst. And, okay. You know, if, I suppose I owe her my, my thanks or sure. my commiserations. Do okay, you want to give a shout out? out. <laughs> she knows. Yeah. She, she's actually, you know, just as a prominent figure here at Bluebird uh, Shopping Centre. Okay. So, uh, okay. I'm sure she'll pop into your gym. Excellent. And introduce herself. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, no, okay. she knows. She's a very good English teacher and awesome. she had a huge impact on my life. So, mm. she knows. Okay. Fant- ph- phenomenal. So, like, I mean, what? So, you go from the book, but then, like, what? Why choose sort of public office, a life of service, right? So I suppose my grades weren't good enough to be a doctor. Um, or a pilot yet. Well, yeah, the pilot. Uh, the sp- pilot was another story because mm. then I, I did try out for the cadets and I wanted okay. to be a cadet. So the, the SAA had this wonderful cadet program. Mm, mm. And being, you know, having read all the books, being able to identify any aeroplane mm, just mm. by looking at it. Or my friends used to say that I could just hear yeah, yeah. and I could tell them what aeroplane and they could tell me which passengers were sitting in my seat. <laughs> Having wanted to be a pilot, I went and enrolled for the cadet program and I, mm. I went to write the IQ test and while I was walking in, the guy that was at the door handing out the pencils said, shame, you know, I can see you want this, but you're not going to make it. Yeah. I said, well, I haven't even written the exam. He says, yeah, but this is not really made for you. So we, we what do you need? You're too big for the chair. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, we, we're not looking for you. We're not looking for your top. Ah, okay. And I, you know, I'm naive, I suppose, but uh, he was trying to hint to me that I'm not going to make it. You know, yeah, yeah. So it's 100% PE, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm not on the I'm not on the agenda. Yeah, right. Um, so to not me, not on just, the cards, as it were. Obviously, now I understand it's fair, and then, of course, I was. What did I have to do with the mm, part? So mm, why mm. am I not being allowed to fly? Yeah. You know, I just want to serve the country. I just want to help. I just want to be a pilot. So I'm mm. not involved, you know. Mm. Um, so that was also a struggle was how do we create fairness? How do we create justice? And it's not mm. because of me, but it's how do we create fairness and justice in this world? And right. I suppose also being bullied in, in your youth at school the whole time, when you get the sense of justice that's instilled yeah. in you because you always get this want to fight um, injustices, you want to mm-hmm. fight for the underdog, you want to um, you know, call out a behavior where that's, I suppose, needs calling out. And I think that's where I got to okay. a stage where I thought, no, 
I think I better roll up my sleeves and I want to get involved. Mm. So what I did is I thought, okay, obviously then the ANC would be the, mm. you know, if it's Nelson Mandela that I'm after, and that's who's speaking to me, that's clearly who I should be, uh, that's the door I should be knocking upon. Um, and it just so happened that evening, I went mm. out with a group of friends. Well, not that evening, it's a few, ev- a few evenings later, later a few okay. months later. Yeah. I'm, going, I'm going out with friends and the one guy's got a DP um, youth membership form in his car. I say to him, Dan, what is this? And he mm. goes, no, 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 I've joined the youth. I've come to UJ, uh, from that, it's just called Rao. Yeah. I've come to Rao. Um, I've joined the youth True. and I encourage mm. you to do exactly the same. And, you don't have to ask me twice. So yeah. Just let me sign the form. And from then, I uh, never looked back. Okay. Started in the youth in 99, and uh, that's, you know, as I say, yeah. went and up there the was the DA or the which party? The DP then. DP, okay. Um, the I started Democratic my own party, branch. Yeah. Yes. Um, mm. we, we had a few protests. I think my mm. first protest was against Ricardo Giaza and the elephants, the treatment of the Thule elephants. Yes, it yes. It was okay. one of my first that I remember. Sure. Um, I helped Tony Leon very closely. Mm. Um, his mother, God bless her, used to think that him and I had quite a few similarities, but I think he used to hate sure. being, <laughs> being told that. <laughs> um, his first words to me was actually, and, you know, you remind me of the, the brother-in-law in the American Psycho. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but, yeah, I actually got very close to Tony. I mm. used to drive him around to, um, like, a lot of the Jewish uh, mm. events. And, uh, houses in queue going to no. <laughs> Houses on the ridge. Yeah, uh, no, no, we would get to the, we'd, like, the functions and that. Well, okay. It was quite, it was quite nice, you know, the snippets yeah. here and there. One day, though, I mean, it was my pleasure. It was really, it was a good way of getting to, mm. to be close to Tony, to get to, you know, hear from the horse's mouth mm. and to learn yeah. a lot from who I thought at the time was a really great politician. Mm-hmm. And for the time was definitely mm. what this country needed, a person yeah. that was in Nelson Mandela's government, but was still astute enough to be able to say, you know, things aren't right here or things yeah. are not 100%. We have to call it like it is. Mm-hmm. And um, so, uh, having done a few of these uh, errands, um, you know, dropping in at the airport, fetching yeah. it from the airport, <laughs> um, one day we go to a Chinese function and uh, we walk in and I, I'm used to just, uh, people either assuming I'm his bodyguard or he yeah, introduces yeah. me as his associate or his yes. colleague. And the uh, hosts. Uh, gestures me to the table where the other bodyguards or the cameraman and the, yes, yes, the, yes. the band were so to, oh, okay. know, <laughs> sitting. Uh, and Tony's like almost like, yeah, off you go. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Tony, I'm yeah. going to drive you all the way here so that I can yeah, sit, sit with, in the corner. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I brought it up in like a friendly protest in the car on the way back. Okay. Yeah. Which table did you end up sitting at? No, I still got, I was, I was supposed to. Okay, uh, yeah. You never argue with Tony. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah fair you, enough. You, you just shake and say yes. So, okay. But in, my, in the car going home, I did kind of just express my unhappiness in a pleasant manner. I did say, mm. you know, Tony, I don't get paid to drive you around. I'm not yeah. really your driver. I don't know yeah. if Sandy's told you, but I don't really, you know, I'm not really your driver. I'm actually yeah. a counselor in Johannesburg. Yeah. And, you know, I do this because I enjoy your company and I do this because I, for the love of the party and because I believe in you as a leader. Mm-hmm. And he goes, oh, yes, Darren, you know, you know, it was just out of common courtesy and, you know, to the host, I'm sure you <laughs> were, you know, and Tony has a nice way of words which is making you feel about this small <laughs> when, when you raise any issue. Yeah. So the next time, mm. <laughs> I fetched him from the airport. He had obviously come back from Europe. Right. And I dropped him at his house. He goes, oh, hang on a second. And he pulled out a five euro note. Yeah, as a tip. As a tip. <laughs> so, so, actually, Tony, right. I must be honest with you. I'm actually going to keep this because yeah. it is actually going to be a memento of mine. Yeah, I've yeah, actually yeah. got, uh, you know, this you five got euro it. from I do still have oh, this brilliant. five euro. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm still the tax man, but I, I do still have yeah. the five euro. I say, There's no know. euros. <laughs> So I'm going to keep it just as a memento from you. Oh, fantastic. But, no, yeah. you know, he was a good leader and he, he really was a man for the time. Mm. And I think 
taking the DP from 1.7% and, sure, and yeah. taking it into the status of official opposition, mm. I often think that he never got the credit that he possibly deserved. And I think that he's the legacy that, that he left. Mm. And I think the way he stood down, I think, and the way that Helen came up, I think there was not enough time to mm -hmm. give Tony the credit that he possibly deserved. So, right. You know, and I think it is a bit, you know, sometimes the, the greater leaders don't uh, stick around. They're the ones who step down and move on when it's time. Well, that's good, yes. Yeah. I always say, you know, you've got to know when, when it's too early and you've got to know when it's too, too late. late yeah. And uh, time it well. So, you know, in my case, when you come home and the family from camp and the family's moved. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, geez, thanks, guys. Oh. So, <laughs> what what keeps you in the game? You know, when I was a ward councillor, mm. what happened was I won an area in Ward 32, which was Alexandra and Clifontaine View. You got some fun stories about that. Well, right? I tell you, that was, I mean, having burning tyres threatened around your neck and mm. having actual ministers and governments threatening to, you know, telling, goading people to keep me on my toes and mm. that every day I wanted to resign every day sure. I'd come back and say this is my last day in fact I did I did resign three times I did mm. write in and say that's it I mean the one day when Metro Police couldn't even protect me when I had to rely on the ANC to send yeah. in the, the, and the, the heavy squad yeah. to come in and, and it's not resigning because you're hat full of no work. it's like no, literally and for your own safety and your not family. even for my own safety yeah. it's because mm. I was going to die cheaply Mm -hmm. protecting people building people that i wanted to build that would never be able to appreciate why they were killing me if that right. makes sense yeah. It's, yeah that sounds laughable but i can tell you stories the one mm -hmm. i had two taxi associations where i had to mediate where the provincial the provincial minister was quite happy to let me get stuck in between the the wall um he had all the bodyguards he mm -hmm. had all the police and i had nothing Mm. Um, sure. And it, it's it's, uh, it's really you know when you when you walk in there alone, man alone, and you've got both sides of the, both taxis sitting there, and they've got mm. their hitmen, and it's a horrible picture. And then you've got the community sitting there, and one member of the community gets up and blames you because she came to complain to you, mm. and uh, you did nothing. You didn't stop this powerful taxi association from dropping their prices or from being more courteous mm, mm. Uh, to their passengers, you've got to ask yourself, how's this day going to end? Um, and sure. there you you do care for the community. You want everything to build that community. It's been on ETV that they're shooting in Ellendale, they're mm. burning tires and people are phoning in saying, councillor, this is your community dying. What are you going to do for your community? And mm. you say, I'm here. I'm here, but where's the, where's the other people? Mm. Where are the people that are actually responsible? And yet, I'm the person that stands to, and it, you know, I'll say it humbly, and I'm not saying it as mm. a proud hero, or, you know, He-Man or Rambo's little brother, but I'm there. I'm the one that's in the direct line of danger. Mm. The people that are really responsible, that give out the taxi routes or that, mm. you know, hold the taxi bosses to account are not there. Who gets the danger? Who's in line of the danger or the risk? Yeah. Thank thankfully, mm. we managed to put this to bed. Thankfully, I did manage to mediate between the two. Um, do you think maybe that it was just you had something to do with that? Like there was less noise to deal with? Well, I think that, I, that it was me that mediated it. Yeah. Yes. I, I, no, that's I, not, it's like that there were no other uh, I managed representatives to, there. Uh, thankfully, I had a relationship yeah. with the bosses. Mm. Um, and I managed to speak to the one from the one side where I had visited them and I had tried to mm. put the case of the community forward. Um, I did event, subsequently I got invited to a party afterwards um, to thank us. Okay, and sure. That's I, cool. I, I respect everyone's culture and I have no mm. disrespect for any rituals or anything that uh, mm. come out of anyone. But myself, I cannot handle any... I cannot handle any death or mm, anything. Mm. I, I wouldn't watch a chicken or bird being slaughtered. So I don't. I don't have a problem with it. I just don't. I can't watch it. Mm, mm. But so what happened is, I walked in, and as I walked in, there was a sheep, a live sheep there, and I, 
obviously you know what's going to happen, but you want to respect the decorum and mm. I have every intention of staying there. But without warning, they, they start. Sure. And I felt so bad. Mm. I, I grabbed my phone and I ran out. And Shane, they came to me and said, Shane, like, don't worry, we'll... I said, no, 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 I'm just on the phone. I just got a phone call like, to yeah. try and yeah. count players. Mm, yes. um, but you feel bad because mm. you, you really have to ingratiate yourself in the mm. community. And it's, yeah. you don't want to show disrespect for the community, but it's something that's natural. You know, you, I don't naturally want to see violence. So yeah. it's nothing that they're doing wrong. It's just something that I personally don't want to witness myself. Um, so do you, there, there is a degree of understanding. That. Well, they were, uh, as I say, like, luckily, Precious. that side yeah. of the taxi, you know, that, yeah. that taxi was, was very understanding, and uh, we do, uh, mm. we, you know, we enjoyed a good relationship. You can picture it that uh, at some stage, there was Metro Police bodyguards for them, mm -hmm. and bodyguards for the other side, and um, a whole host of all community, and then just me. Yeah. Only, <laughs> only white face yeah. having to walk into sure. try and mediate but these were the mm. kind of things so just to get back to your question mm. every time that happened every time something mm. like that happened because for every one of these stories there's another story that I could tell, yeah. I could tell you when I was invited to when a child nearly drowned in Alexandra and the sewage was flying out of the sewage pipe and the sewage was about 15 centimeters high already and because the child nearly drowned in it, they wanted me to come and see. Mm. So I come there and I can see it, but they wanted me to go in. And I'm like, but I can see it from here. No, 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 counselor, you must walk inside the surge. I'm like, mm. but none of you are walking inside the surge. No, no, but counselor, we want you to go look. You are a leader. Mm. You must go look. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm a, I'm not going to back down from a challenge. You know, I've mm. got to show them that uh, I care just as much as I do. And um, because they're standing there and because everyone's watching, you've got to lead. Mm. And for me, it was okay. The best thing I can do is I'm going to get the, the resources available to come and see you. Mm. Me walking into that is not going to help. I can tell you their surge. I can mm. walk into it and get my, my, up to my ankles in that surge and say, well, there we go. We've, I've got surge all over my ankles. Mm. That's not going to help. You know, that's going to tell me nothing. But I'm going to phone the officials and I'm going to put them on speakerphone and I'm mm. going to ask them to come out and I'm going to tell them, please come out and please come see what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then, and you do that. But then you've got 20 people agitating that have been agitating from another councillor saying, no, 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 councillor, you must go walk. Yeah. We want you to walk. This is a game to some mm. people. Mm. They know politically that's, uh, yeah. so now they've incited the crowd to say, yeah, councillor. Mm. And I said, do you do this in your wards? No, 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 Council, we're asking in your ward. We're not interested about the rest of Alexandria. We're mm. interested in you. Yeah. I was like, I'm just asking. I'm not going to be intimidated by you. I'm going to, mm. I'm just wanting to know. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. You walk in there first, and I'll do it with you. Mm. Yeah, oh, Councillor, you see, you're scared. I said, no, no, no. Yeah. I just want to see some logic. Mm. So they wouldn't, and the community already respected mm. me for showing the fact that I wasn't going to back down and mm. that I was brave enough to stand my ground. But then I did what no one expected me to do. I did it. Mm. I said, you know what, let me show you something though. I'm not going to be intimidated by anyone, mm -hmm. but I am going to lead. If, a, if one of my community members can nearly drown because of mm. our city, I can walk in there. If it's, mm. my, if it's my baby's face, Mm. 15 centimeters in sewage, mm. I can put my feet there for the benefits of the community. But look at these ANC councillors running scared. Yeah. All of a sudden, the shift focuses and all of a sudden yeah. they're in their cars driving away. So these are okay. every time there was one of mm. these down moments, it was always be preceded by one of these up moments mm. where mm. some, you know, you think, wow, this is rewarding. I'm going yeah. to stay here just for this. And okay. I always threatened that I'd write a book because there are so many of these stories where mm. you want to resign, you want to, you want out, you know, you're about yeah. to have this tie and no one, I can never describe that feeling of knowing shit. I am about to die. There's not, mm. nothing's going to stop me because I know that I'm going to die, but I'm dying because of something that I couldn't even deliver. Yeah. I'm dying for something that actually, it's not even a cause. Mm. And here I stand with nothing to show for it. Here I stand, it's not even a legacy. No one's going to say, oh, shame he died because 
the whole of Alexandria was out of water. Yeah. But he yeah. died because he was the DA councillor, not the ANC councillor. Mm, mm. So when those moments take place, you want to mm. resign, you want to say, right, cheers, off I go. Yeah. But then as soon as, like with that specific incident, when you get the, the water tanker there mm. and you take the first sip and you turn around and you go, Amandla! Yeah. And everyone turns around, the 300 people that were 20 minutes ago wanting to kill you, turn around and go, Amandla! Yeah. And then they say, councillor, you'll always be with us. That's rewarding. That then you say, yeah, I'm staying. I'm going to be a community mm, politician. Mm, mm, mm. Sure. And, you know, it's those moments that every day you want to resign, the next day you want to stay. It wants to bring you back. That on. stayed with me now throughout in okay. politics. It's always been the day before. One day you, you know, one day you want to mm. just throw it all in and say, you got to, There must be a better world out there. Yeah. The next day something happens that says, she's I mean, I'll so, never change this job for anything. So, so th that was my question. My next question, which you've answered, you know, sort of what leads you into, I mean, what keeps you in this game? And I said, that's it. Huh? Well, sure. You know, the first thing that dragged me into it in terms of being a counselor mm -hmm. was salary was, my first salary check was 4,999 and 2,000. Sure. Um, and it's supposed to be a, a part-time job, so mm. that was actually respectable for a part-time, semi-respectable mm -hmm. for a part-time job. No Jewish mother. I was going to say, I met, I, I I met your mom. That <laughs> was not <laughs> respectable. <laughs> no Jewish mother was going to accept that for their daughter. I don't yeah. think so. Mm. Something else had to motivate me, and mm. for that, I, I comforted myself in saying, you know what? One day you could be in finance, one day you could be in health, one day you could be in safety. Mm -hmm. You could wake up and decide where, where you, want. you okay. want to be. That motivated me through council. Mm -hmm. Then when I became the ward councillor by mistake in, the, in Ward 32, mm -hmm. that changed everything. That lit a firecracker in me that you became a community politician. And mm -hmm. that, that would be a good subject of a book one day is, mm -hmm. is what I went through as sure. a community politician. When you don't have one boss or four bosses, when you've got 15,000 bosses and everyone decides mm. what your job description should be, uh, people would phone you at yeah. four o'clock the next morning after winning the award, I already got my first phone call from a clue mm. and someone saying, you know, we've had this pipe that's been burst for the last three days. What are you going to do? I'd hardly just, that had hardly sunk in me the mm. fact that I just won an award that I didn't really want to win. And, um, I'm already being told, you know, what you're going to do about this sunken pipe. And moving from that into Parliament, the only reason I never wanted to go to Parliament, mm. the only reason I went to Parliament was to get out of this ward. Okay, and sure. I left the ward, though, mm. thinking, why did I do that? I learned so much. I got so much out of that. The, mm. the university fees on that were priceless. Right. That you could never learn more than what I went through every day having to strategize every day having mm. to motivate and pull myself through horrible horrible um you know just horrible elements or mm. great mm. elements or and then i went into parliament and i went into the most unlikeliest portfolio and that was sports yeah and i did it because i thought that would be my challenge i would go in there easily i would find something that could i would benefit from in terms of, i thought it oh, I pictured Get myself going to the rugby matches, the yeah, cricket yeah, matches. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I, but I, saw the, I saw the fight. I saw the mm. transformation. I saw what was required. And I thought to mm. myself, you know what? There's mm. more to this. Uh, I thought to myself, hang on a second. Mm. And I actually then did my master's in public administration. And okay. my thesis was around transformation because I could see what the country was not seeing. And I was mm. sad that the politicians were not seeing it. I was sad that they could not see the long-term vision of how they were trying mm. to break rugby. And thankfully that rugby would still sustain because of the money behind rugby. Right. But that they would break cricket and that cricket mm. would hobble along until, you know, uh, carry on hobbling along because mm. the people that they're trying to build up don't come from the areas where they scout. Yeah. And then I'd look at all the other sports, hockey, that would have to pay their way to go to the Olympics yeah. because you know, they don't consider that uh, in them, in certain people's minds, not considered a fair sport or mm. mind games like chess and that not being um, brought into, to, brought serious enough into the school curriculum where I think it's a cheaper way of um, a sport and education. It's a game that, For sure. uh, you know, the benefits of that mm. game are just understated. Mm. And these are the kind of things that I think 
given a lot more time in that portfolio, I think there was a lot more we could have done. But my ANC chairperson and I did achieve a lot. Um, in fact, we were there was a lot of times where ambassadors, where mm. uh, presidents of um, franchises, and that invited us to games together. And uh, I remember even going to the Springboks on the bus to mm. from Fourway from Monte Cassino to um, Ellis Park, mm. where we were. You know, it was a All Blacks match. And this, and you know, there was respect for the the ANC and I together, working together, having mm. the right, working, her and I, if we had been given an opportunity to implement what we wanted and not what the minister wanted or not what mm. the federations were pushing towards, let's say, in, the, in uh, well, there we had, uh, we had a specific federation that was the umbrella body that was later to, uh, have a commission investigate it and mm, find mm. exactly what we were uh, mm. um, accusing it of. Right. We would have made inroads, major inroads, and I can assure you of that. But then I also had another interest, and that was international relations. Mm. And I believe that the quest in international relations was dire in the sense that South Africa was not looking at the bigger picture. We, we thought we were the Madibas of the world still. And we thought that we could use Madiba magic yeah. to carry on. We were arrogant enough to believe that we still had this huge presence mm. on the world stage. So although we have so many uh, missions around the world, expensive missions that we cannot even mm. man, mm. We, we don't have the, the, the political wherewithal behind it. And we don't have the, the manpower to, to run these mm. missions mm. efficiently. So we've got embarrassing, embarrassing um, archons around the world that are known as South Africa, or footprints of South Africa. So my first foray into that was to go to Namibia. My first, mm. my first visit to Namibia, I found this beautiful, beautiful country. You leave a pizza box in the, on the main street of Vintuk, and within 10 minutes it's clean. You don't even know who it was mm -hmm. that picked mm -hmm. it up because you can't see anyone for miles, but this street is clean. You know, you could eat off mm. the floor, it mm -hmm. was so mm -hmm. clean. They don't get loaded. They get the electricity from South Africa, but they don't get loaded. Sure. And mm. we're talking about a beautiful country, clean country, and then you get South Africa's missions in Namibia. Mm. So we greeted at the uh, the embassy. The embassy lifts are not working that day. Um, we see mm. all the horrible faces of this embassy that are not working. And then we go to the ambassador's house. And it's still got graffiti all over the walls inside the house, not on the outside. Someone must have left this house in such a state that there's actually graffiti on the inside of the house. Um, sure. there's, then we go see some of our other properties that South Africa owns that are just mm -hmm. in such a state of disrepair that I actually coined the phrase that the dirtiest part of Namibia is South Africa mm -hmm. because it was our properties in Namibia that were so dirty. And sure. You know, it's an. You're going to get a letter of warning from the Namibia. Well, basically, we. I must tell you that uh, it's actually then followed that in mm. Germany we've got the same problem. Mm. And in most of our other areas, we we have got these problems. We do have expensive properties in the prime mm. areas of these countries, and then uh, we don't, you know, we don't maintain, maintain. them, and then this mm. is what they look like. So international relations became a, a pet hobby of mine, mm. and then conflict. Now mm. I never started out as someone that wanted to, you know, be the hero of the Middle East or someone that mm. wanted to worry about Morocco or worry about Russia and Ukraine. But I had a meeting with an ambassador early on in my parliamentary career, mm. uh, Arthur Link, and he said, we, we had a meeting at the airport and he said to me, you don't choose Israel, Israel chooses you, you know, yeah. and you don't choose the Middle East, the Middle East yeah. chooses you. Sure. I was saying, look, I'm into sports, so I'm not really... I'm not here to talk about Judaism. I'm not here yeah. to worry about you know Israel, and I'm sure Israel and the Palestine will sort themselves out. And I really did not know much about mm. the conflicts or anything. But when he said that, and after he said that, oh man, all the signs just kept on hitting me in the face. You know, just kept on saying, just know you know what you're talking about. Just get right. to know what you're talking about, and don't just hear it from one source. Mm. So I bought the case for Israel from Alan Dershowitz. I bought, uh, mm. you know, I bought 
uh, the, the book that was released from the BDS side, I think it was from mm. the side, I can't remember who wrote it, but the, it's a thick, thick book that mentions my dear friend Michael Bagram mm. in it. It's a thick, thick book. I read both sides. I then went and looked at all the, the, the academic writings mm, mm. on both sides, and I tried to look at what was, what's been proposed in the UN, what has been proposed. And then I organized a trip to Israel for a few of my members of parliament mm. to go see what this was all about. And we went to Palestine, we went to uh, Israel, we went into all the different, uh, we went to Ramallah, we went to Jerusalem, mm. we went to, you know, wherever you can see the other Israeli Jews and Israeli Arabs living mm. together, or Palestinians living in Ramallah, mm. how, how it's um, done there. I got to feel it for myself, and I got mm. to get that sense for myself. And that was an important, that was 2015, that was an important, sure. important transition for me in this Middle East, uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the Middle East, because it was then that I realized what I'd been reading mm. and what I saw were two totally different things. Um, yeah. You only get it once you see it. You can only get it once you mm. see it. And then you realize that these guys, in terms of, you know, just propaganda or in terms of certain governments or certain parties or certain organizations, so they haven't been there. Mm -hmm. They could not have been there. Mm. Or they're getting their facts from a magazine. Mm. And that's when I said, well, hang on a second. So there's Israel and Palestine. There must be Morocco and Western Sahara. Mm. What are the differences? And why is South Africa more fixated about something outside of the continent than something mm. like Morocco and Western Sahara? And I, I try to pull back um, Africa into the Western Sahara and Morocco um, arguments and say, first finish mm. one conflict. Uh, one territorial dispute yeah. and then go on to outside your continent. Mm. Charity begins at home and actually start with your own region. Zimbabwe itself yeah. is not even uh, sorted out when you get that done then. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was very interesting because in 2015, I was the first person in our portfolio to call mm. out Russia in terms of Ukraine. Sure. Not siding with America, I must just hasten mm. to add. I do believe that NATO at the time were making silly mistakes in terms of they were building NATO presence in mm. Asia and Russia, but they were trading with Russia. Um, mm. Mm. So it is what Trump was saying, you know, that you've got this um, dichotomy again in terms of building relationships with a country and then building a military presence against, against the, the country. country. Right. So we did, we did have these, uh, mm. we, we did have these, um, these spaces of, uh, you know, what I, what I believed was um, clean vision, mm. where we came in and we said to the ANC, use your proximity in BRICS to negotiate with Russia. Mm -hmm. Use Mr. President Putin. You're not going against America because you're just saying to President Putin, leave the Crimean Peninsula at this stage. There's no mm. reason to, to assume mm -hmm. um, to, to encroach on the Crimean Peninsula. We've seen what's happened in Georgia. We don't want to see the same script happen again in the Crimean mm -hmm. Peninsula. Just de-escalate what's taking place there. When he started encroaching on the borders of Ukraine, again, it was not fashionable to talk about. I was talking mm -hmm. about it. Again, it was only the DA in these committees that were saying, BRICS is a good opportunity for you to address President Putin in a nice environment mm -hmm to de-escalate this, um, this mm. encroachment and to, to stop what he's doing yes. and to call out the behavior, not to take a side. There's no side to take at this stage. Um, just to make sure that we don't get to a situation where it's Russia versus Ukraine mm. or NATO versus Russia you know, in a proxy war over Ukraine. And of course, we were ignored and ignored and until we did ask the ANC to pick us up because then mm. it was an incursion and then Russia was in Ukraine and mm. it wasn't about favoring the US over Russia or it was, it was right or wrong. It was a, a yeah. human rights abuse over or the True. effects of the pockets of mm. the South African because of the war yes. in, in Ukraine and Russia. So it's, all these sorts of conflicts were, you know, I took a perverse interest to it because I believe that there could be solutions to it. You just had to look at China, Hong Kong, mm, or mm. there would possibly lie an answer. 
Um, you could look at Western Sahara and uh, Morocco in terms of what the UN mm. resolution is post the referendum. They haven't had the referendum yet, but these are potential solutions that could be held for all conflicts. You know, you could be talking about the United States mm. of Israel, um, whatever you call it. If we, we, you can't have a two-state solution. You mm. might have to have a three-state solution, mm. but maybe, you know, there's, there's ways of looking at it. I think it, it's interesting that you say it. So I just want to see, Kat? Sean, I just want to see if you want to come in and grab a seat. Kat, do you want to come and sit? You have to stand outside. Thanks, Kat. Um, have you met? Oh, can no, you? I think we did. No. Darren? Nice to meet you, Darren. It's you, man. Kat, grab a seat in your office. Okay, don't turn it on, though. I've got a dongle. Okay, all right, Are you okay with that? So I think it, it's interesting that you say that because. You know, maybe we've gone a little bit off topic because you're the top. No, but this Where's is what's it. Yeah. Oh, Rob, how are you doing? Sorry, sorry. No, no, no problem. Yeah, okay. How are you? Always, even in the parking lot here. Great. How are Always. You? Thank God. And this is Darren. Hi. Uh, Rob, yeah, we're just recording a podcast, so Cap's ready for you. No, no, you can hack. It's fine. We've got great okay. audio afterwards. All right. I'm just coming for a quick hack. Okay. How are you? I'm a bit I'm fine too. Thank you. Right. Um, so just, yeah, good looking guy on there. <laughs> oh, it's you. <laughs> Damn, I thought it was me. Uh, so the, the one thing like that, that South Africa does have is we're quite uniquely placed in the world, right? That we do have relationships with America and with Russia and with Morocco and with Israel and with the Palestinians. So we, we can actually use that position and that gift yeah, I often mm. say that. I say that we should mm. be working on our diplomatic relations in terms of our human rights history. That mm. we have the human rights background and pedigree to be able to. We should be um, mm. going around the world resolving conflicts with yeah. our human rights pedigree. But unfortunately, our our foreign affairs diplomacy is is shrouded in history, and mm. we it's backward focus. And I think that's where we get it wrong. And that's, I suppose, that's the downfall of right. what we are doing at the moment and where we're getting it wrong at the moment. And it's sad because mm. we, we, we could have had, you know, we could be a success. Yeah. And we could share our success with others. And okay. Go, going forward, what, what are your views for the future? And what I love is, <laughs> and I'm going to put you on the spot with that, but, um, you know, it, it like... I don't think I've seen a place with so much potential, you know, within the ordinary folks. You just got, like, I mean, like, look at that guy over there, you know, like hardcore, <laughs> you can take this out if you want, <laughs> your face is like, you know, I'm not talking about this. No, no, okay. We'll, we'll, okay, well, yeah. no, no, thank no. So, no, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm an optimist. I mean, I, I've, uh, I had a book dropped over by Bernard Katz. Mm. <laughs> Um, one of his chapters in his new book is called uh, "This is a This is a Good Place mm. if You're a Millie," and um, <laughs> it's a oh, great place if you're <laughs> and a chop. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought, well, wow. I mean, uh, yeah, and he gets it. You know, Bernard mm. really does get it. Mm. He's like really, uh, his his humour is spot on. Mm. You know, he's one of those cynical people that really has a good heart, but he's also, he'll call it when he sees it. And mm -hmm. I don't know him well, but I've just, from reading his book, I, my wife looks at me and like, she just hears me laughing every, yeah. every so often yeah, like, yeah. in these fits of laughter. And she's like looking at me and she's jealous because she can't, she doesn't understand why I'm laughing and she can't see why I'm, what's making me, so, you know, yeah. what's, what's taking me to this level of laughter, but it's Bernard's writing and it's his, it's his humor. But oh, that definitely. saying, you know, yeah. that uh, this, is, this is an awesome place if you're a Millie. It could be mm. said for South Africa. I mean, this is an awesome mm. place if you're the leader of the EFF and you're, you're, yeah. you're, all, your, all your minions are giving you money to buy your Gucci boots and, your, and you can talk in um, irony and paradox. Um, yeah. But the truth is, is that we're at a... We're at a critical, critical place mm. right now. And people often say to me, Darren, is it not the time to leave now? Like, is now not the time? Mm. And people often have said to me, and I, 
you know, you never know if they're really being serious, and I trust, I hope they're not. But they've often said to me, we'll leave when you leave. Mm. And uh, I mean, that's just not a good strategy. <laughs> um, yeah. And hope is not a strategy. I, don't, yeah. I, I like that. But what one should do, and it's advice that I've, I've always mm. dispensed, and I think it's advice that one could take in good stead, is that you should have a few flags, mm. proverbial flags that you plant along the way. And these flags should be whatever you want. You know, whatever you will not be able to handle. So, mm. if it's if Julius Malema becomes president, God forbid, or if it's mm. um, the rand dollar hits forty uh, yeah. rand to the dollar, or if it's you know, each yeah. flag is personal and each mm. flag is, but you must discuss that in good time. You must discuss mm. it with your family or whoever's uh, influenced by this decision. You have this discussion. Mm. You logically and unemotionally just think about what these flags would be. And then you plant these flags in the sand and you mm. say to yourself, right, when these flags are breached, as soon as all these flags are breached, when the last flag is breached, I'm getting mm. up and I leave mm. the country. We've decided where we're going and that's where we go. Don't look back. Mm. Just get up and go. Don't think, ah, oh, no, but tomorrow we know that South Africa is resilient. We know that they're going to mm, be better. Mm, mm. We know that they always bounce back. Just get up and leave. Now, I can't tell you what those flags are. Mm. They're personal. They're personal. You must know what those flags are. You plant them and then you watch them. You mm. tend to them. For me, I believe that whilst there's an opposition and whilst there's a few opposition mm. parties and whilst there are good people willing to defend the constitution yeah. and willing to protect and entrench what's in the constitution, mm -hmm. I believe that we still have a product here. Yeah. I'm, not in the, I'm not in the minority. I mean, there mm. were great names like Madiba, like the Rebbe, mm. like mm. Yeah, Nostradamus, that believed exactly the same. But don't take my word for it. Mm. The protection of the constitution and then I'm, I'm also involved in SADC. I'm, the, I'm on mm. the executive committee of SADC. There's a whole bunch of countries around us that are building, that are emerging, that are mm -hmm. operating. So you don't have to take Zimbabwe as an example, but you can take mm. uh, Botswana. Um, they'll get it right. They just have to stop their, they have to stop their nonsense with their ex-president and they have, to, uh, mm. they have to make peace with their ex-president and they have to work together and mm -hmm. the investments will come back. They'll get it right. Mm -hmm. There's Mauritius. Mm -hmm. There's Namibia. Mm -hmm. You know, if we lift the sanctions, if we lift the grey listings, if we, these are the kind of things that SEDIC could be a good region mm -hmm. if it does right by its people and not by its government. Yeah. Um, Namibia, the president is, for some reason, is also uh, pro-Palestinian, like our president. It doesn't have to be. You can have a neutral stance. Mm. And this terror attack at the moment, there's terror and there's peace. Mm. You can call out terror for what it is. You, could, you don't have to be ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. You really mustn't yeah. be ashamed. Terror is terror. Mm. And whilst there's captive, while there are people kidnapped and still alive, you must, surely you could judge a person on whether they want those children and elderly returned mm. alive. What sort of person doesn't want a person returned healthy and alive? Yeah. A, a civilian that mm. has never done any harm or wrong to anyone yeah. else. They were at a peace party. Mm. So judge the people that don't want them returned alive, judge those people. Yeah. So you can have peace. You can have human rights. You can agree that terrorism, you can call out terrorism for what terrorism is, and then you can still say, I support this side or I support mm, that mm. side because supporting or being against terrorism does not mean you support one side or the other. Yeah, yeah. You're calling out terrorism. And in the same vein here mm. is that then you've got this opportunity to say, as a president, um, my trade is bigger than Russia mm. than it is with Russia. Do I want to close down an embassy as like Israel? Yeah. that provide the economy, the mm. technology, the jobs that could be lost in that regard. But mm. worse than that, worse than that, that is not factored into this equation. What if America, hypothetically speaking, <clears throat> what if America turns around and says, we closing our embassy? Yeah. Sorry, South Africa, you've now stepped one step too far. Mm. 
and America turns around and says, sorry for you guys. We're Oof. now closing out. We've had, you've ridiculed our ambassador. Yeah. You've, uh, you've, you've uh, pissed on our goer. You, this is the last straw. Mm, mm. We are now closing our doors and we're calling our ambassador back and you can have your, you can have all your yeah, ambassadors back. They act like mm. celebrities in America anyway. They don't really do uh, anything much, yeah. uh, the, you know, consular work. Mm, mm. You have them back. What then? Because I can assure you that that will be the tipping point. Mm. Not because it's America, not because I might be pro-America, which mm. I'm not. I'm, uh, you know, I am part. Of the, I don't believe there's a West and a East. Mm. I believe there's free world mm. and there's ruled. Uh, mm -hmm. ruled authorities. I'm part of the free world. I am advocate for the free world mm. and I believe that the trapped worlds, we, we need to get people freer and yes. we need to liberate them. So from my side, if America did take their, their bags and they closed their embassy and they left, what it would say to the outside investing world is business is closed in South Africa. It's yeah. No grey listing, no sanctions, nothing else would have been this catastrophic mm. than the embassy closing its doors and saying we're out of here. Business investment would dry up. The mm. rand would tank mm. overnight yeah. to unprecedented levels. Mm. Worse than if Desmond, uh, Desmond Roy had been made mm -hmm. uh, finance minister. Then what? Do you think Paul Mashatida is going to sit there and go, oh, well done, Sir Ramaphosa? That's a good move. You stay as president. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll wait your next move. Mm. He is going to lick his lips. He's going to rub his hands, and he's going to seize the opportunity mm. to cause a coup, an unviolent, un, uh, non-military coup. Mm. Mm. He's going to take his or he's going to take his NEC executive, and he's going to say, right, Mr. Ramaphosa, as Julius Malema, my best friend, predicted, you are being recalled. Mm. Guess who we put in your place? Paul Mashatila. Right. But Paul Mashatila comes with his own baggage. Who's his baggage? Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happens that he's got nice friends in the form of Julius Malema, Fakila Malula. So does Julius Malema stay in the EFF or does the EFF come back to the ANC? Mm -hmm. And what do the EFF want? Do they want a nice, peaceful, beautiful ANC? Uh, country where everyone just shares their own land and mm -hmm. everyone's a capitalist and they're all just working towards this beautiful country. They've already told us what they want. They haven't hidden what they want. Yeah. So let's believe them. Let's listen mm -hmm. to them. Let's understand what they want. So that's what we're up against. What we need is a strong opposition, which we have, mm -hmm. that puts the ANC in check, that keeps the ANC knowing what the risks are for every decision mm -hmm. that they make, for every utterance that they make. And one of those utterances happens to be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is a vote, being Tuesday, the 21st of November, is a vote on whether to keep Israel's embassy here in South mm -hmm. Africa. Crucial vote. It should never, ever come to Parliament. It should never yeah. be a decision taken down in Parliament at this time. So you're saying it should not, a, a risk like that, based on America's reaction, is not something that our country needs? I don't think so. I don't mm. think the ANC have accounted this risk. Yeah. Although, although the, mm. the, the cabinet is busy arguing at this point right now mm. as we speak, deciding on whether, to, whether they're going to agree it or not. Mm. It doesn't look like they're going to agree it. It actually looks like they're going to play for time. It looks like they're going to kick it to touch. Okay. Which will be a good thing uh, for them, because I can assure you, close that embassy. You do so at your own risk, not mm. because of Israel, not because of America. Mm. But if America does close their doors, it's because of the investment, it's because of the mm. signals mm. sent out to the rest of the world. The thing with Woolworths, yeah. Woolworths is Ukraine in the mm. sense that it's also a proxy. Um, mm. Woolworths is a proxy for the BDS and Jewish consumers. Yeah. Jewish consumers being pulled into this, not wanting to mm. unwillingly, but pulled into it nonetheless. Mm. EFF and BDS have for a long time been telling Woolworths that they will get their products destroyed or they mm -hmm. will come in and help make sure that these products are not sold. Mm. So read into it what you will. Yeah. Woolworths saw it as a great sign to stop selling Israel products. And the other day, BDS released this letter saying that they victory, they've got mm -hmm. uh, Woolworths to stop selling uh, Israeli products. It is only one Israeli product left, yeah. sure. So, 
And it, Woolworths is quick to come out and say, no, 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 that's a lie. You know, we don't believe, polit we're not politically inclined. We're not... Uh, it was for the we, safety we don't of the boycott, staff. We don't do any of the sort. Yeah. We just want our stores to be safe and we just want mm. our consumers and our staff to be safe. So for that reason, we will not stock that one product mm. and therefore no more Israeli products. We've stopped supplying all other Israeli products. Mm. What does that sound like? Does that not sound like possibly 1933 in Germany? Like when yeah. Jews, we love your business, we love your money, we like your custom. We don't really want you in our shops though. We don't, mm. we don't want your products in our shop. Your products are dirty or your mm. products come with risk. So maybe you can spend a bit of, you can stand outside. Give us your give money, us but don't money. give us your give product. You the product. You're not giving us your product. You don't right. want to sell your product. Does that sound like that? Mm -hmm. Hasn't Roy got, does he not maybe just made a faux pas in this, is caused what could be an historical blunder mm. in, 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 by being a proxy in the Middle East now and not being involved in the Middle East. He's now brought his company in to the Middle East. Big time, um, yeah. And the unlikely enemies of this were mm. people that weren't even threatening all this. They, yeah. They've lost a lot of products from Israel. Mm. They still bought at all this. They had BDS threatening Woolworths, but they still bought mm. at Woolworths. Now, reading the WhatsApps going around, reading the Facebook, reading mm -hmm. the room, they're not going to buy from Woolworths. Yeah. Why do you have to? There's checkers, there's mm -hmm. spa, there's pick and pay all around you. Why do you have to go to Woolworths? Yeah. And I believe that this might be a trend that starts, that we don't start this boycott, divestment, sanctions mm -hmm. against any business because this is how it began, you know, this and, is where and it this is what it leads to. And this is what it leads to. Yeah, yeah. So if I was, if I was the management of Woolworths, mm. I would quickly rethink my strategy. I would rather invest more in security mm -hmm. and I would bring in more products. I'd maybe share it out. I'd bring products from mm. the Palestinian territories or whatever the case may be. I mean, they make lovely dates. I've had dates there. I've had lo I mean, lovely spices. Yeah. What an opportunity to support a yes. community. Bring them you both. Know, which Woolies is big on with the, you know, the yes. prison greens and yes. all of this. Bring them both. It's a both. great opportunity, yeah. So he's got, a, he's got, some, he's, he's got mm. a lot of thinking to The same with the protest the other day in Rosebank on Saturday. Mm. Who shops at Rosebank? Mm. Is it just uh, anti-Zionist people that shop at Rosebank? Mm. Is it fair? I know as a political party, it's very hard to get a, a table there to have voters education. Right. To try to register people to vote. Is it fair to have, and have, being fair in freedom of speech and freedom of expression mm -hmm. and freedom of association, is it fair in a private, in a private uh, corporation to have people allowed to come chant one set, one Zionist, one bullet, mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be, in a shopping center, targeting one shop who mm -hmm. is a rent payer yeah in in the shop if not one of the anchor tenants of mm -hmm. the, the shop why no control over that why did you not control that mm. was it the safety again of your consumers and your employees or was it again bowing down to the the likes of bds mm. or, or eff and again stand outside have your pickets choose the side no problem mm. the safety though the, the, the chanting, mm -hmm. the, the horrible inciting of violence. These are things that could be better done elsewhere, mm -hmm. if, if need be. You yeah. should never be inciting violence. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're either advocating for peace or you're a warmonger. And I don't think, South Africa, given mm -hmm. South Africa's history, I really don't think we should be encouraging warmongering at all. Yeah. So for me, it really is a case of, at this stage, Rosebank was also, has made a horrible, horrible calculation, mm -hmm. miscalculation here. And if I was Cape Union Martyr, who I think have been, you know, they've been very mm -hmm. gentle in this, this situation. I'm, uh, I'm really upset that they, they are targeted in this because mm -hmm. of why, why them over 500 other businesses and why yeah. them over. But if I was them and I, I would ask, you know, I'd get my rent free for the next six months mm -hmm. over this horrible, libellious attack in, in Rosebank. Mm -hmm. um, because it was purely against Cape Union Mart. It was right. only against Cape Union Mart. And this whole store, the whole of Rosebank had to be, um, you know, treated to this because of one store. Mm -hmm. Not fair.
So what they're are they going to say now? Close, get, get rid of all the Jewish-owned businesses in the malls because it's a security. And where risk. does it? And where do you? Where, where again? Where does yeah. that take us to? Which that, year? And, the, and again, 1939. Yeah. So for me, mm. this is the time. We always said never again. We mm. always say don't. Now is the time. Be vocal. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Uh, mm. I, I I agree with what the chief rabbi is saying. Mm. I agree with what he's saying. One hundred percent. That's. We, you cannot let. You, mm -hmm. you, you've got to be right in what we're talking about. You've got to. You've got to call out terrorism. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to call out terrorism. Yeah. You've got to be able to condole with those uh, people that are condole with those people that have been victims of terror, regardless of what side you're. Yeah. Israel. If they were taking uncalculated steps, if they were being reckless, we know that you could bomb Gaza in in 48 hours. You could, mm -hmm. You could carpet on that whole area. Yeah. If they were reckless, by all means, use whatever means necessary to, to take them through the, mm. you know, through the courts, through mm. wherever. The but process, through the courts, through the, through the process. Through the process, right? Were, and I, please, mm. I hold no candle for that. Mm. Uh, I, I believe he did divide Israel. I believe mm. that he's taken Israel to the, the most extreme, worst depth mm. of its history in terms of uh, legal mm. manipulation. And the, what the protests that we're seeing on the streets, uh, I'm saddened to see the states that Israel was in mm. pre this attack. Yeah. Hamas did Israel a favor in one sense, in a perverse mm. sense, by uniting Israel mm. and bringing everyone together. But um, I think when the reports are said and done and the security breaches are brought to mm. the fore and everything is seen why and what's happened, I'm not sure Netanyahu will probably stand the master and yeah i think it's you know if you look at our history if you look at what we've been through right what we survived i mean how close you spoke of ralph Mima and sort of the discussions in kempton park how close it came to fire and brimstone i mean we were in a very good position particularly with our oldest our older guys with you know to be the guys to sit down and say this is how you can work stuff out why are we not being the peace advocates? Well, again, this is it. There were so many times in South Africa's history mm. where we were on the edge of civil yeah. war that we don't realize it. I mean, mm. even as, as far back as the Rubicon speech, if people yeah. actually knew the truth about the Rubicon speech, the evening of the it's Rubicon like, speech. We, we, like we used to joke in Cape Town, we were going to Camps Bay. Every time the hotels filled up with foreign press, you knew stuff was going to go was going to happen you know yes. <laughs> so and the so next the day in a day or two and it was that's yeah, yeah. and i think you saw mm. from the rubicon speech where the army mm. uh, i think played a one day it will come out i mm. think the army had a lot to play in in, in the speech being altered so right um i would say that this country has seen a lot of, of challenges and been at mm. the edge Quite often, yeah. I mean, even in recent times, it's been at the edge quite often. The xenophobic violence mm. has, has been able to bring itself uh, very close to an edge. Financially, mm. it's been able to bring itself mm. to a fiscal cliff um, in grey listing and what have you. We're lucky we're rich. We're lucky that we've had money and resources. We're lucky mm. that we've got taxpayers, as, as many as we do. But the truth is, is that we should have learned from our history. The truth is that we should be more consistent with what we learn from our history. So the tra same way as what, how we treat Zimbabwe, or the mm. same way as we, we, how we wish to treat uh, the Palestinians, or China and Russia, we should be able to do that mm. across board. Yeah. Now, we've got these problems in Lesotho, we've got these problems in Swaziland, we've got these problems in Botswana. That's just in, on the static level. Mm. You don't have to go far, far out your door to know that in Darfur, the, Probably more people have been killed in a day than there are being killed in Gaza and, uh, in the, up to date in the, mm -hmm. in the war. Why is no one talking out in that? Why did no one talk mm -hmm. out in Tigray when Russia and Ukraine were having their war? Yeah. Not, do African lives not matter? Do lives in Africa mm -hmm. not matter? Because here we were losing, and the calculation of lives in, in Tigray have been understated. Mm -hmm. I can assure you that they they in the multiples of tens of thousands. Sure. They, they're far understated at this point in time. Mm -hmm. The tens of thousands of lives that we lost in Tigray have not been honored. They've been just forgotten. They're just, they're just uh, too mm -hmm. bad. It's so sad. 
Tigray should have been the highlights of every African country's agenda over mm -hmm. Ukraine and Russia. And it never made it to the Darfur. Mm -hmm. Why are we not speaking of it? I mean, if you have to look at the map of Africa and you have to look where the airplanes are allowed to fly, where they're not allowed to fly, mm -hmm. Africa is like a chessboard, yeah. you know? And that should tell you the state of, of Africa. It should tell you that there's enough on Africa's plate in Africa mm. to have to sort out with our own. And who should be doing that? Well, if you're strategically placed in the South and you've got yeah. your history that you do and you're one of the world, uh, the continental powers and mm. you're a peacekeeping body, hmm, step up. Yeah. Um, for the terrorism in Mozambique, we went there, didn't mm. make a dent. Rwanda went there in a day and have reversed the, mm -hmm. the cycle. Shouldn't, Rwanda's gonna, Rwanda can do more, the, yeah. the tiny country can do more They're physically on the us. continent <laughs> than, than yeah. us. And that's sad yeah. because that's a, that's a proxy also for the West. And the yeah. truth is that if we lose that alliance, mm. uh, just now you'll find that our new Ethiopia and Egypt in BRICS. Mm. BRICS won't need South Africa. They'll have Egypt and Ethiopia. Mm. Well, where's South Africa going to find itself without any friends? Yeah. Um, so we'll have Cuba, Palestine, and, uh, and then what? Mm. So we have to be careful in what we, what we say now. And the best recipe, the one thing that we are good at, is human, we're supposed to be good at, is human rights. Yeah. So if we can be consistent with our human rights, if we can carry it forward, use our Madiba magic mm. and not our Zuma magic or mm. not our Ramaphosa magic, but our Madiba magic, well, then hopefully we've got a product to sell. And we can still do that. I hope so. Yeah. I think there's still time. Yeah. I think it's just, it's an understanding of the value of one's legacy and not what it's going to be when you're gone, but what you can create with it now. And it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for people to, you know, I think it comes, speaking to you, I get the sense of greater care of the country and of the community and of the communities you served than yourself. Because you wouldn't be going back into danger. <laughs> well, you weren't going with, you know, bodyguard. So, <laughs> you know, like th th that's the reality. That's what it speaks to. You know, but, I, I always joke in Sadiq. I mm. always say to the, because I get treated better than the speaker and the <laughs> ANC people in Sadiq. Okay. Yeah. I get my own bodyguard and my own driver. Right. Yeah. I always joke if my party could see me now. Um, <laughs> that's probably why I got the demotion my daughter showed me on the internet. But okay. Um, and I must say, the net value on that internet site was they said that I'm worth three million dollars. I mean, if that's true, I would love no, to but see that. that no, it's Zim dollars. Oh, okay, yeah. that, that is, Zim that's dollars. the extent. Because, yeah, I wanted to, I was asking my daughter to please go find it, like, yeah, just ask yeah. that source to please send it to me. But yeah, yeah. The truth is, <laughs> yeah, is that selfishly, yes, mm. um, there's a lot of roots here. A lot of people, the first thing they tell you when they leave. So I was trying to tell you how safe it is and mm -hmm. uh, how nice it is because you can walk at 11 o'clock at night as if you're going to go take your dog for a walk at 11 o'clock at night. You might run into a South African. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They always, it's the same script. Mm. Just check how clean this is and yeah, check yeah, how yeah. safe we are. Mm. The one thing they don't have and the one thing they always tell us is the roots. Mm -hmm. So selfishly it's to protect the roots. Yeah. Selfishly it's to say we, we're here protecting the roots. We're here to make sure that their roots mm. remain, that we can fight another day, we can, yeah. we can live to fight another day, that there's still something to protect, there's still something to, to take to on. Fight, um, mm. Every time I hear about another person leaving, another person leaving, I don't begrudge them mm. their decision. I mean, that's, that's a hard yeah. decision they must have made, and I promise you it was never made in unity. There's mm. always that dinner table argument about should we or shouldn't we, and yeah. the stress that they were under to make that argument. But when they go, that when they come back, that when they come and visit, mm. that they, they know that there's still roots here, that they know that South Africa is not that thing that was once, yeah. you know, that this can be a place of home still, that mm. this can be a place you can come home to. And it is home. one day under the new government, yeah. that yeah. there will be, sure. this could be Cape Town all over the South Africa. Like and bring that expertise that and that South Africa, world that, exposure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we fight for. We fight to deliver an image, mm. a vision that mm. will be delivered from image into implementation. Right. And that's 
people come home and South Africa will see a population of, you know, of everyone again. So, so uh, I, I've seen a few guys from my matric year spend time overseas and have come back, particularly when they had young families, because this is the place you want to raise your kids. Cape, well, for them it's Cape Town. But, you know, it's something that's very, very special. They don't have Frangelica's cheesecake, so there's no real <laughs> point. Um, on that, uh, uh, just a quick, for you, there's two questions I wanted to ask, but th th I've been fortunate enough to spend time working with youth, and whether it's in Richmond, up in the hills, in Natal, to my coaches and my guys, there's such drive, there's such desire, there's such commitment to better oneself. But I think, like, from what I'm seeing, you know, business training, business education in schools, entrepreneurial development, trade development, uh, cheap internet and access to internet, those are the kind of, what, what is your view on that? Well, let's start over the basics. Mm. What do we have? Yeah. And what can we be proud about? Climate. You mm -hmm. can't take away our climate. Yeah. We've got it. So you can't take it away. Mm. Natural beauty, you can't take it away. Yeah. You know, We've got it. Exceptional rugby. Oh, that's you can't take that. Away. <laughs> yeah. So, so we've got yeah. it. Yeah. Um, resources, mm -hmm. natural resources. We have it. Mm. We just haven't found a way to manufacture it ourselves, so that we don't have to have other countries come and exploit it away from us and then sell it back to back us to at us. these yeah. high prices. So we got the recipe, the ingredients mm. for a great, great recipe for mm. a lovely, lovely product. Mm. The people. Yeah. South African people, every color, every race, every gender, mm -hmm. every uh, religion, resilient, happy, mm -hmm. funny people of our own unique culture. Mm. We, we are unique. We really are unique. South Africans are just these resilient people yep. that have really, really had it all and been through it all. Um, and yet, we got to find that way to almost crowd out government's interference mm. and almost say, mm. you know what, we've been doing fine without you, government. Private sector, we've everything. Actually, yeah. 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 The problem is you've got business that hasn't stepped up to the plate in terms of uh, taking on governments. Mm. You've got government that talks business when it knows nothing about business. Mm. Uh, and you've got my, my minister's a communist, but he heads up uh, trade and industry. Um, that in itself should uh, keep people laughing. Mm. Um, uh, you know, it's all about laughing. Unfortunately, a newspaper today in South Africa is, is basically a comic because mm. you look at it and you must, every time you read, you know, that must be a joke. That must be a joke. Yeah. That must be a joke. And you're looking at it and you're thinking, well, which, which is true? You know, we used to get the People magazine. Yeah. And the People yeah. magazine used to be so, you know, like so out there. Like, you always yeah. like, you know, there was an alien that kissed so and so or so and so killed An alien fathered my baby. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, the newspaper is as believable mm. as People magazine, or People magazine is probably more believable than the newspaper. And yeah. What must people outside of South Africa look when they read this newspaper and they're reading the stories in South Africa? So we've got the ingredients, but then we've got mm. government. What we need is to make other government behave properly mm. by threats like America saying, you know, it's I'm getting tired of this. I'm going to close this embassy, mm. and then you'll see what happens when the rand tanks. And you won't have them full of Makanyana going. We don't care about the dollar mm. because she doesn't know what the yeah, hunger is. Yeah, she doesn't yeah. know what a pure, real struggle is when mm. the Congo has civil war. What we need here is for our government to start respecting its people. Mm. We need people to rise up. We need business to take the gauntlet and say, "Sorry, this far and no further." And we need civil society to come up mm. and make these public private partnerships and say, right, this is how we're going to do it. These cases like in Etiquendi, which is going to do what Swartzeranica did with uh, trust, with uh, taking mm. your rates, putting them into trust, and they will administer mm. how the potholes get fixed or where, how the street lights get fixed. And mm. Swartzeranica was working. The residents saved money. They had the street lights fixed quicker. Mm. They were empowering people from within the communities to get the contracts. Yeah. The potholes were fixed quicker, cheaper, faster, better. Mm. The, the, the water leaks, everything was fixed ch quicker, cheaper, better. Mm. And the community was benefiting from the, from the contract work. 
that should then be the norm. That if our mm. government can't do it, step aside. You know, if, if we have to create these municipal uh, uh, independent right. uh, trusts, almost. residents association yeah, yeah. that, that are going to mm. actually interfere and do the work of municipalities because mm. municipalities just can't do it, well, then mm. you know, so be it. If that's what it's going to take to build mm. and develop, what we can't have is the risk of driving down a Jeppe Street or Bree Street and then finding yourself all of a sudden on a different planet mm. where a road can just divide whatever mm, the case mm. may be or driving in a you know just driving on a road where a truck loses its brakes and mm. can plow down through six cars or eight cars because no one checks the roadworthiness mm, mm, of mm. a truck or because you give it the leeway because of a bribe these are the kind of things that a good clean government will change mm. overnight it's not months mm, or years mm. it can actually change overnight so showing governments in Cape Town it can do it in Midvall. we can do it here in South Africa as well as a national government mm. not as an independent Western Cape independent on its own we can do it as a national government yeah. and we must 100% for you the future oh. what are you is there still stuff you'd like to do within uh, the different portfolios or what are you planning yes uh, still like to marry Katie Holmes but no yes. I'd, <laughs> I, I would definitely want to get my pilot's mm. license yes. selfishly, cool. but uh, okay. I do. I do want to deliver in SADC. I'm working mm. on a major, major project. Mm. Um, the Chinese of embassy have asked if they can get involved in it. The, um, I've, I've, I've offered it to the American embassy. Mm. Um, it's a major product. Uh, this is going to have uh, this is going to have legs mm -hmm. all over SADC, and it's going to have legs internationally. Red Bull. Um, potentially could be um, uh, a sponsor in this. Epic. Yeah, this this is something that uh, I leave tomorrow mm. to Mauritius to go and discuss it. And um, I'm hoping I can come back with great, great news on that. But that's the future, yeah. Awesome. Dude, thank you for your time. No, I, know, you. I think we said like 30 minutes, being an hour and 15. I really Jeez, appreciate Joe. it. <laughs> no, I've got a lunch to go. No, to. Oh, sorry for keeping you from your lunch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, future president. No, <laughs> no. Will you please ask John to stop phoning me? <laughs> <laughs> but you must have got a call from everyone huh? else as well, surely. I've got the calls from everyone else. Just John. <laughs> Just, oh, just, just him. He's the only one who's got my number. Well, in the DA works. Hundred percent. So, but I will say no. Hundred percent. So, um, I've gone blank. Uh, our councillor from Bedford View. Uh, she. Michelle, uh, uh, Joel, Joel, Joel Humphrey. Yeah. Humphreys. She put out awesome. the uh, law lovely, 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 lovely. Put out a message on the group. Hey, they're at Sahedi. Go and register. Oh, so awesome. brilliant. I love Walked Joel. in. It was such a pleasure. And I think this is the big thing. And I suppose from from my side, doesn't matter who you're voting for. People, like the youth particularly, need to understand what was sacrificed and yes. what was given. Well get, get off your butt and go and vote. You owe it to your ancestors, you owe it to your grandparents, you owe it to the future. Just go and vote because that can start a conversation in the, in the queue. It can start seeing that you are involved, you have power, you make a difference. Get out there and vote. By not voting, you're yeah. endorsing your government. You yes. keep the government that you have yeah. and you get the government you deserve by not voting. That's it. Even, and even if you vote for the government, you know, just go and vote. No, no. Okay. <laughs> just go and vote. Okay. We'll just oh. cut it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Dude, you're a legend. Thank you very much. Thank, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. That Cheers was fun. Thanks. Like right. a man. Awesome. Did you